This is the Vivo X80 Pro. And if you thought the company's X60 or X70 phones were ridiculous, this is a whole new level. This is a sponsored video, so I'm not making a review, but the X80 is such an interesting, different kind of phone that I want to show you my top 10 coolest things about it that, to be honest, I think it's time other companies paid attention to. Number 10 being the unboxing. You don't just get a phone here. You get a fairly premium hard case, you get a USB-C cable, a pair of passive noise cancelling earphones, and a pretty enormous charger. More on that in a minute. Number nine is the fingerprint scanner, which is kind of an unexpected one because I've not really given much thought to fingerprint scanners in a couple of years. They've all just been kind of fine, you know, they work well, but this is the best scanner I've ever used. But thanks to improved tech, there is zero faffing around now. You literally, you register your fingerprint by tapping on the screen once, and that is it. And then from that point, it works shockingly reliably, incredibly quickly, and also look at this fingerprint scanning area. Most phones just have a tiny little circle in the middle. This is at least 50% bigger than average. It works with wet hands, most don't. It works under direct sunlight, most don't. It even supports two finger authentication if you're really, really serious about security. Oh, it doesn't have cat unlock. Oh, are you trying to get inside? But there's more, because you can also customize it. You can customize the fingerprint scanning icon. You can customize the fingerprint scanning animation. You can customize how you want your home screen to come in after your fingerprint has been detected. These are such easy ways to just keep your phone interesting over time. Why aren't more companies doing it? But even more surprising than that, to me, is actually the performance. And I'm not talking about the usual stuff. Like it has the latest Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 chip. It comes out of the box with 12 gigabytes of RAM minimum. It has literally a 27 layer calling system. You can play any game that you want to on it. But what I'm finding more interesting is the bunch of subtler things that it has that just make that day-to-day -day use more rapid than I've ever seen before. I like the fact that the RAM itself is faster than any last-gen phone, the storage is faster, and it's using a storage controller chip that can both read and write data way faster. All of this stuff is just laser-targeted at improving that feel of instantaneousness. And it works. Okay, so with the last Vivo flagship, I would say that we had a, a good battery experience, but at the same time, not an exceptional one. Well, they fixed it. The battery capacity has gone up from 4,500 to 4,700 milliamp hours. The maximum charging power has gone up from 55 watts to 80 watts, meaning that you can now go from zero to 100 in about 35 minutes. And the screen is much more battery efficient now. Mind you, it still doesn't quite hit the iPhone 13 Pro Max levels of battery life because that thing is just ludicrous, but these changes do push it into very good battery life territory. It does also have 50 watt wireless charging, but you probably know how I feel about the current state of wireless charging. No. Oh. Okay, on to number six. It's time to address the elephant in the room. The absolute behemoth of a camera system on the back of this thing. Now, to me personally, this doesn't look as cohesive as some of their past phones. It's a little spread out just for the sake of being spread out, but it's so ridiculously fun to use. Like, just to start with, you've got Zeiss Color. In case you missed it, I don't see how you could, but Vivo has been working with Zeiss for a few years now, and they actually introduced Zeiss natural camera colors on their last model, but it was so subtle that I could barely tell the difference. Not anymore, they have completely reworked it, and now when you turn it on, it instantly switches to a color science that most of the time looks 100% spot on with what my eyes have actually been seeing. Don't get me wrong, I do actually quite like the extra pop of color that a lot of phones tend to add, but in those times, Times where all you want to do is to just preserve exactly what it is that you're seeing, this can do that. And if you're enjoying this video, then a sub to the channel would be colorful. Number five is the portrait mode on this thing. If you've been following this series of phones, then you might have seen the gradual integration of more and more of these Zeiss portrait modes that each try to recreate the style of a different Zeiss lens. Well, this time we just got my favorite addition yet, Zeiss Cinematic. It automatically takes a wide screen shot in the cinematic aspect ratio. It turns background lights into oval flares, mimicking an anamorphic lens, and it's got the potential for these really subtle light trails. 
but it ain't just that. The portrait mode edge detection has leveled up across all styles. You can now adjust your face in real time to an almost scary degree. It feels like something out of a sci-fi movie. Plus, it can now also take proper group portrait shots. When you snap a portrait of multiple people now, the phone will actually go through each face, identify it, and apply whatever effects are needed on a case-by-case -case basis to get shots like this. Now, number four is a, a really rogue one. I didn't expect to say this, but genuinely, Ultra HD document scanning is insane. Boring. No, 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 no. It's not boring. Listen to me. 30 seconds. So, you might know how I really like this feature on the iPhone, where you can hold down on the Notes app and click Scan Documents, and then capture any page or screenshot or document that I want. Well, this is pretty similar, but A, its page detection is way more reliable, and B, it upscales the shot you've taken, removing grain, sharpening text, and increasing smoothness. No joke, I just take a photo of my laptop screen, and it looks like I've just taken a screenshot. Okay, top three things now. And these are not things that are just nice to have, they fundamentally change the experience. So number three is the anti-reflective cameras. And you might know that this has been a multi-stage process over the years. With every new phone, Vivo has tried to further and further reduce the internal reflections within their lenses. And I feel like we just peaked. <laughs> If you look a little closer at this camera module, you'll notice something really interesting. That while this whole glass panel on the outside is very prone to reflections, when light passes over the actual cameras, you see nothing. The glass covering them is so clear and anti-reflective that you can't actually see it. And what this means is A, extremely clear looking photos, especially when you're pointed at bright light sources, which can wreak havoc with internal reflections, and B, brighter photos. If less light is bouncing around on the inside, more is actually getting through the lens into the sensor. And that leads me on to number two, night photography. Fun fact, this phone uses a brand new camera sensor called the GNV. And what's interesting about the sensor is that it is custom made for this X80 series of phones. And when you pair that with improved software processing and the Vivo V1 Plus chip, which sits alongside the main chip in this phone and just focuses on optimizing the camera's output, you get what they call real-time extreme night vision. It is obviously more of a marketing term than anything, but I can well and truly say that this is the closest a phone has gotten to actually achieving that. Night photos are continuously surprising and crisp and bright, and there's another thing that I've kind of noticed while using this, which is that every single time I cover a new Vivo phone, I will notice four or five main new camera features. And the thing is, all of these cool things added in past iterations they haven't gone anywhere. They just keep stacking to the point where, yeah, I could see how this camera app is starting to feel like it's bursting around the edges, but it also just feels limitless. Like you've got ultra high resolution mode, you've got 10 different types of night mode, tripod detection, panorama night shot, four different types of long exposure shot, astro mode, super moon mode, double exposure. And that's only talking about the options that are made for photos at night. I can pretty much say for sure that no phone camera has this much stuff to play with. It's just fun if nothing else. But the single biggest improvement that I can see on this phone is in its ability to take night video. And this is really, it's the most challenging situation that you can put a camera into, in that you're depriving it of light, which is the information that camera sensors are capturing, and you're also depriving it of post-processing, in that because you're taking like 30 frames per second, there's very little chance for the phone to do much tweaking to those frames. Except we finally have enough power to be able to do that tweaking. Aside from all the other stuff that's going into just making normal video look better at night, there's now a specific night video mode. And the difference it makes is, uh, well, it's not subtle. See what I mean, right? Very cool phone. To check out my hands-on with Apple's robot, that video's here. Or to find out if Sony phones can keep up with the competition, that video's here. My name is Aaron, this is Mr. Who's the Boss, 